Hello my friends and welcome to another Affinity Photo Tutorial. Today actually the episode was going to be about grunge maps and how to use them to improve your photos, but we have something really cool to celebrate because I started my Patreon account and I have my first supporter uh, for my account. And uh, so shout out to Linda. And of course, if you support me, you get a lot more say in the choice of topics. And another benefit is that you get the original files, the Affinity Photo files with all the layers. So you can look into it or even use it as a master file for your own creation. So this episode is for Linda. Thank you very much for supporting me. And we're going to do a photo letter font. So what this means is that we have the photo sticking out of um, the font and we do a little bit more in this episode we also replace the background with a nice sky and we do a color grade map on top of it so we match the colors a little bit better um, so everything looks nice and smooth if you know me you know that i really really like to work non-destructive so i work a lot with masks it makes life easier, especially if you do something for customers, because it never happens that a customer is satisfied on your first design. You always have to go back, change something. So you really want to preserve the original files and the original material that you're working with in your files. And for this, it is best to be non-destructive. So we're going to work with maps today and with blending modes of the layers, which is really nice. Okay, so I will go ahead and delete everything except of the original files. There we go. So we have this lady here on the horse uh, with a not so nice background. And then we have a really cool um, sky with yeah, a really cool skylight. Okay, so let's combine this. Um, first, what we're going to do is we go down here to artistic text tool and everything, by the way, everything is going to be very smooth, very easy that we do today. We can, you can follow it step by step. Um, there is nothing here that you can't replicate as a beginner. Uh, maybe you have to watch the video several times, but that doesn't matter. It's always good to learn. And if you make some mistakes, um, that's the best way to learn at all. So, um, Let's go here, say right, and um, select it again. I set it to black, so it's a really big font. So we have a nice view um, on the picture that we're going to use. Uh, so there we go. Okay, um, now we need the horse again. And for the horse, what we want to do is, um, let's, let's hide uh, the, the font for now. Uh, we want to select just the horse. Maybe make it a... Uh -huh. uh, one second. Let's blend in the font again and set it to maybe 50%. And um, resize the background in a way where we think this is kind of the best match that we want to use for our design. Let's see. What's a nice look? Maybe like this. Is this good? The horse coming in here. And this is sticking out a little, but I don't think this is... Maybe push it over a little bit more. There we go. I think that's kind of nice. I think this should work. Okay, so let's leave it like that. Hide the font again and select the layer with the rider. Let's call this rider. The layer and let's call this other layer sky it's always a good idea to name your layer so you know what is what and um, now we're gonna go to the paint brush tool no i'm sorry we're gonna go to the selection brush tool and we're not gonna select the background we're gonna select the foreground this time because we need the rider it's more important this time so let's select this roughly uh, make the brush a little bit smaller, maybe. So we go into the smaller parts. There we go. Um, down here also. Oh, I don't think we need this part down here, actually. Uh, okay, now we go to refine. And, of course, we have to help... Um, we have to help Affinity Photo a little bit. Let's 
go again to the selection brush tool, click on refine. And um, now we can draw, let's say this is the foreground. So we have to help a little bit because she has a white dress and the background is white also. So of course, Affinity Photo has a little bit of a hard time to decide which is foreground, which is background. Um, so we're gonna help it by selecting down here, either foreground or background or mate to go over here. How do you pronounce it? Say your mate or mate or I don't know. It's really having a hard time with this, but we can fix this later on. It's not such a problem actually. Um, we can paint it out. Just want to save some time here to prepare this. So this works pretty good. Um, let's click here. Then let's use this one. Let's go around these edges because they don't seem to be that good, actually. There we go. Okay, this, we have to separate this one. It's important. Didn't actually work, did it? We have to, we have to see if it worked in the final selection. Okay, let's go over this again. It's a bit of back and forth on these kind of things, but I think that's okay. Um, you can scroll, uh, you can zoom by uh, holding control and using your mouse wheel, so you can uh, zoom into it. And um, with space, if you hold space, you get the hand, you can move around. Uh, so you have a better look at what's going on. So for example, here we have a little bit of problems still. Uh, let's go here a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not really doing a great job at the moment. I think we will do this with the paintbrush later on. Okay, let's leave it at that for the moment. Okay, uh, so I click on apply and then we have a selection. Let's click on control zero so we see everything. And then we click on mask down here, mask layer. Good. So uh, now we click on control D uh, to deselect. Oh, there's it's actually nicely selected over here. Uh, let's zoom in and see. It's actually not that bad. Actually did a good job. Okay. Okay. I like it. This is maybe not the best thing here, but I don't think it's much of a problem. Uh, we can select the mask and then take the brush and set it to black. Uh, because this, as you can see, if you if you paint uh, black on a mask, it will hide everything um, that you paint on. So uh, let's do the small paint in here a little bit just to hide this. There we go. Okay. And maybe hide this too. I don't know what this is, but I don't think we need it um, for the look of the picture. Okay, that's good enough. I don't think we need this part down here. Let's check with the font. No, we don't need it at all. So that is not a problem. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna duplicate the writer layer. Uh, let's duplicate it. And then we are going to um, pull it into the font, actually. And the reason for that is because we want to have, uh, we want to use the font as a cutout. Let's set the font to 100% again. So we want to use the font as a cutout uh, for our picture, but we also use the, uh, the rider at the same time. So this gives us both um, together. And now what we can do is we click on the mask layer of this rider and click on the brush again, make it a bit bigger. And now we can just paint out everything that we don't need. And you can see here that if I paint here, um, the letter is still preserved. Maybe hide um, the other rider picture, zoom in a little bit, and then we paint over this. There we go, maybe bigger brush. There we go, let's hide everything that we don't need. 
And it's not a problem if you paint into the into the font because we have the other picture in here. So that's that's a, that's the cool trick about this. Let's hide this here. There we go. Okay. And now if we um, enable the other rider again, that's inside of the font, we have this. So this is a perfect combination. So you have both now and. The only thing you have to do now is take the sky and just pull it in here um, into the font also. Sorry, that was not the right way to do it. Let's see it. Put it behind the rider and there we go. We replace the sky. It looks even better than the file that I prepared actually. I really like it. It's really nice. Um, you can do one more thing and that is... Um, you select both of these layers uh, by clicking one and then click uh, hold control and click the other and then click control G so it's grouped. And now everything is a group and you can just move it around without a problem. Aha, uh -huh, we see something up here happening. We don't need this, but it's not a problem for us. We just, we just go to this mask layer of the rider and uh, we paint this part out. There you go. See, and this is really the benefit of being non-destructive. You can change things later on if you see something um, that you don't like. So basically we are pretty much done with this. Now we put a color grade over all of this. And for this, we're gonna do another mask yet. Um, so select the group and then click control and click the layer. So this is creating a selection. And then you click on the mask layer. So this is creating a mask for the group, but we don't need it for the group. So take this mask and pull it out. There we go. You can close the group again. Um, press Control D to deselect. And now we're gonna go over here to the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle over everything. There we go. I already have the color gray. We can we can um, do another one. So now we just take the mask and pull it onto the rectangle and then take the rectangle and pull it over our group. Let's call this color map. There we go. And we can set this to a nice blend mode, maybe soft light. You can experiment with the blend modes. I, I always say that because it's really important to um, experiment with design decisions. Uh, you can go up here um, to get a gradient. You have here these different color choices. So color is just one color, but gradient is a blend mode from one color to another color. And if you click these big points here, uh, you can select um, the color that you want to have. So now we have a really a choice of what kind of thing we want to have. So maybe make this blue, maybe try this on bit more red. Okay. So let's see. And here with the opacity, you can see how much of an effect you want to have on the colors. And because this is now um, influencing the background and the rider, you get a closer, um, how can I say, fitting of the color. They match better. It's a really easy trick um, to get colors to match a little bit more um softly oops uh, that was not intended sorry control set to reset that um we have actually to select both the color map and the group now uh, let's put this in the maybe a bit higher than the middle um by the way if you see this error here you see there's a little step this is not an error in the picture. It's an error of the display. I don't know. There's something a little bit off in Affinity. So if I zoom in, you can see uh, this is gone. There's not really a problem. It's just displayed wrong. I don't know why. Um, so now we're going to do the other font. Um, we were writing find your adventure. There we go. Click. And um, we can go up here to the font. Um, I selected one that was called High Tide. Uh -huh. High Tide. It's a demo. 
Um, by the way, if you use fonts, I will, um, if you, in the in the download file that I provide uh, for my uh, Patreon supporters, um, I will also have a text file that tells you where to download the fonts that I use. And sometimes they are for commercial use. Sometimes they're just for personal use. Um, so really check out the license to see um, if and how you can work with the font that you download um, to not get in trouble, you know? I also provide the download links to original photo files where, again, you have different kinds of co copyrights. Mostly I use files that have a Creative Commons um, licensing, so you should be able to use it for commercial purposes, but really check that out, make sure um, that that is possible. Okay, I think we are basically done with our design. And um, what you can do in the end is you can select all layers like I did right now and then um, uh, control G. So you make another group. Um, so everything is neatly sitting in one group and you can move it around and you can resize it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to make a shadow for um, our rider and the font. Uh, let's do this real quick. I select this group. Uh, let's make it, let's call it rider plus font, okay, uh, go to the effects layer, go to the shadows and see what kind of shadow do we want to have. Maybe like this, that's kind of nice, a little bit less, maybe not too hard. It's a soft scene, so maybe have a soft shadow. It's one thing. By the way, this is one thing I learned. Um, if you do print stuff, you it's it's so easy to go too hard on the shadows. Always set it less shadow than you think you need. Um, because in print, it's always darker than you think uh, from the shadows. So it really go soft on the shadows. Well, I think we are done. It was really quick. I think we are 17 minutes in. So that was really cool. I think it looks amazing. And um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and was easy enough for you to follow and thank you again linda for supporting my channel and if you want to support um, click on the link head over to patreon and see uh, the different be uh, benefits that you can get it's just one dollar per month for now because this is early supporter um, and i want to see how this works out uh, if people actually want to have that and these benefits so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode goodbye